I love to praise. God bless you. Good morning. Miss Sheba, let's go. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Uh, yes, I know that. <laughs> Chrissy, yes, God bless you. God bless you. Sister Kirk, God bless you. Hey, look, Kirk. <laughs> Good morning. I have not seen it yet, Overseer. Wow. I'm going to take some time today and try to watch it. Uh, praise God. Praise God. Mother Pearl, my bishop, told me all about y'all. So your bishop was there, Mother Pearl, Mama Pearl. Let us know who that is. Good morning, Monica Monet. Good morning. Good morning to my HAP family. Good morning. I need a Copeland, Dr. Brenda Skillman. Wow. You're on this side today. That's good. Carmen Rose, amen. God bless you. To those of you that are joining us here on Zoom, it's so good to see you. God bless you. Amen. Well, <clears throat> What can I say? Listen, I do want to just announce a little bit about our upcoming beautiful gala. So I've got 60 seats that I've got to uh, get rid of between now and the 31st to uh, meet our minimum. So I'm going to ask each of you if you would share, share it on your pages. Uh, those of you that are maybe not in the city and i realize it's a lot for everybody to jump on planes and do all of those things i get it you work but i'm going to ask you if you would share uh the announcement on your pages uh we want to see a capacity crowd right so you know going into it two weeks uh most people are waiting uh to the last minute right uh praise god thank you elder tab and uh, so, you know, thank you, Pastor William Lamal. Thank you, Dr. Thea. Good morning, Dr. Thea Wilson. Yes. So if you are in the uh, Detroit area and uh, I've been a blessing to you, our church has been a blessing to you, I'm going to ask you to consider uh, purchasing a ticket to attend our gala. Um, it's, it's encouraging when uh, you have served for 50 years. Uh, to see the city uh, come out. And, and so I'm really, really, really looking for the people, not leaders per se so much as I am the people that I have touched, that Holy Ghost Cathedral has blessed. Um, we're, we're a company of about 300 saints and we, we, we love our church. We love our church. Uh, but I also know that our church has been a tremendous blessing to people in our region and in our city. And so I'm going to ask you to go to our website at www.gotellit.org. I'm going to ask you to go to our website and I'm going to ask you, even if uh, you say, well, I live out of town. If you live out of town, uh, that's OK. You can be a patron uh, and you or you can sponsor an ad and just, you know, tell us how the church has blessed you or, you know, tell us how Go Tell It Ministries, uh, Holy Ghost Cathedral has been a blessing to you. Or uh, you may even say, you know, Bishop Bond has been a blessing. Thank God for uh, Bishop Vaughn and because it's it's really uh, it's really Holy Ghost Cathedral that made all of this possible. Uh, if my father had never had never started the church, uh, we probably wouldn't have the platform that we have. Uh, so I really, really want you to consider reconsider. And I know time gets away from us. But listen, March 30. First, you don't want to miss it. March 31st, right here in the beautiful city of Detroit, uh, you can join us for our 50th gala celebration. That's March 31st, and that's right here in uh, beautiful, beautiful Detroit, March 31. And uh, the gala general seating is 150, and VIP seating is available. Uh, for 250. And of course, 50 means Jubilee. So I am going to encourage you go to that website at www 
www.gotellit.org. And I'm going to ask you to uh, really, uh, really consider being in the room. Uh, you know, I was thinking uh, this morning, I said, you know, people like to come uh, to your funeral, but the living celebrations are more meaningful, right? And I know I've blessed you and I know you've been blessed by Go Tell It and by Holy Ghost Cathedral, but I really want you uh, to be in the room. Listen, March 31st, uh, our 50th gala, 50 years, Holy Ghost Cathedral. So the Board of Presbyters and the Congregation of Holy Ghost Cathedral, uh, we are celebrating 50 years. Now, we really are 51 as of this year, but we could not celebrate because of COVID last year uh, or the year prior. So we couldn't, we didn't want to put anybody's health, including mine, at risk. So we're celebrating it this year. But the first Sunday of March, uh, 1972, we walked in to our new facility. We made motorcade from uh, Green Grove Missionary Baptist Church number two. And we motorcated to uh, 935 Alger, 935 Alger. And all over the, the, the city, there was this a sound that was made, praise God. And so um, my dad, my mom obeyed God against the odds, uh, being led by Holy Spirit, of course, and um, started the work with the... Um, uh, local church that we were at, Green Grove Missionary Baptist Church number two, uh, and they all motorcade. There was like 127 cars that came, and so my dad uh, was uh, installed as the senior pastor, and uh, we have been going since that day. So I really, I'm going to be appealing to you every day. If you would go to the website at www, do it today. Don't put it off because we do have to put uh together the videos and all of the virtual um ads that you will send if you would send it if you go to the website uh, you will see where it is that you can send um what it is that you want to do if it's a virtual ad or if it is a sponsorship certainly you can sponsor a table sponsor tickets or you can actually be a patron. Uh, but really, what I really want is those of you that are local, those of you that are in the city, those of you that can make your way, praise God, that you would be in the room. It's not going to be church. We're going to have fun. It's going to be fellowship. We're going to have a little, you know, we're going to do a little church because it is a church celebration, but it's a gala. And we want you to dress up and, and be beautiful and show out, show up. There'll be valet service. It's a beautiful venue. The food is going to be extraordinary. You get your choice of uh, lamb chops or stuffed flounder, or you can have vegetarian lasagna. If you are vegan, we certainly can make sure that you have your meal as well. So we just want you to come. I do. I really want to see your face. I want to hear your stories, your testimonies. And if you come in the room, you will be on the program. We have beautiful uh, MCs, um, our state legislature, the Honorable Sherry Gay Daniego, as well as uh, one of my beloved, my favorite pastors in town, our Pastor Welton Smith Jr. He's going, they're going to be MCing the program. We've got a full band. We've got an orchestra. We've got delicious food. Uh, it's going to be great. And so mark your calendars. you got about two weeks, March 31st, 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, and it's going up. It ain't going down. It's going up. So I wanted to make that appeal. I, you know, I do a lot of stuff and sometimes I forget. <laughs> and so they got on me yesterday and said, look, you got it. So if you're in the city, please, especially if you're in the Michigan area region, go to that website and buy your ticket. Come on in and join us. If you are not in the city and you're not you know, able to get off work, it's a Friday night. Uh, we get it. Hey, man, if you can fly in, if you can drive in, that would be great. But this, I believe, is a, a time where we can celebrate. 
you know, I, I, I won't know anything about my funeral, praise the Lord. Well, I don't know my mom. She said she was going to hear everything. So maybe I will too. I don't know. But that's way, that's way up the road. But I think that it's important, especially uh, in this season where Holy Spirit is doing what he is doing, that we honor living, living legends, living uh, entities that have been a blessing. We will show up at a funeral and pack the, the joy out. But when we have living experiences, sometimes, you know, it gets biased. It does. It gets biased. We don't see sometimes that as important. If you're flying in hotels, the block uh, ends, I think, today. So you can go to Eventbrite and check out those uh, hotels. But it's also on our website. <sighs> So come right on in. Sarah Vaughn Harris, thank you. Jonathan is coming in. Angela Marshall, good morning, Sora. Good morning. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Tasha Page Lockhart is one of our psalmists. Uh, we have a creative dance uh, that's coming, Dorinda Clark Cole. And um, we have an orchestra. It's going to be a chamber orchestra to welcome us in, as well as a band that's going to play during the dinner. We're going to enjoy our sales to celebrate God's faithfulness for 50 years, 50 years of faithful service <clears throat> to the city of Detroit. So come on in, get your tickets. And uh, yes, Pastor William Lamont, I, I want you, I want you to know that I want to smell the flowers. I want to hear <laughs> what God has done through us. Uh, in your life. So I'm just making an appeal. I'm taking the time to do it. I have the audience to do it. And I minister to you uh, every day. And so I wanted to just steal some time. I'm going to be doing it every day to just share March 31st, 50 years of spiritual service to the city of Detroit, Holy Ghost Cathedral. It's at Fellowship Chapel uh, there on West Outer Drive. Uh, you can get all of that information at uh, the website, www.gotellit.org. Let's fill this room. Let's jam pack this room uh, with people who love us, people who have been blessed by us, people who have grown because of the ministry of Holy Ghost Cathedral, uh, of the ministry of Bishop Carletta Vaughn. This is the time for you to show up and show out. Don't let it get by you. Don't say, oh, well, I would go. No, come on, let's go. Fill the room and let's enjoy each other. That's March 31st, 8 p.m. Fellowship Chapel here in the city of Detroit as at 8 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Go to our website, www.gotellit.org for all of the details. Or you may go to Eventbrite uh, and purchase your ticket there as well. But whatever you do, make your voice known. Make your voice heard uh, March 31st. And I tell you, it's going to be, I'm excited. I'm excited. We're going to be so dressed up and so fine. And we want Holy Spirit to show up and show out and be a blessing uh, to us as well. So come on in and join us. I wanted to take some time and really share with you what is on my heart that you would not miss it. You know, sometimes you see it on Facebook or you see an ad or you hear a radio ad. You say, oh, that's nice. No, I want you to be a part of this. Amen. So uh, I'm glad to be back. It's been glorious uh, being away, early flights, lots of teaching and talking and sharing on Holy Spirit. And uh, it's been great. I thank you for your prayers. If you covered me while I was gone, listen to me carefully. Uh, while I was away, Holy Spirit spoke something to me about our personalities, about our personalities and about our temperaments and about the way we believe we are born of the way that we believe we are shaped. Good morning, Maria James. Good morning. Thank you, Angela Marshall, my sword. Mary Ruth Montgomery. Good morning, my Ananias. God bless you, Gertrude Dream. Jalika Taylor. Good morning, my sweet, beautiful sister, Ruthie Sinclair. Veronica Blair. Yes, to Pastor Rita Bill. We're so excited. I'm so excited. I want to talk to us about... <coughs> our personalities. And as I was um, away 
Holy Spirit spoke to me and asked me a question. And I'm going to ask you the same question that he asked me. Holy Spirit asked me a question. And I thought it was a very profound question uh, because when uh, he asked me the question, I was like, wow, I don't know. I, I had never um, heard this question. Uh, but we know Holy Spirit's work in our spirit. We know Holy Spirit's work um, in the church. We know Holy Spirit works. Um, but will, will we ever address the fact that our personalities, our personalities can also be impacted by Holy Spirit? Thank you, Sandra Goosby. It's good to be back, Travis. God bless you. Hallelujah. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Somebody wants to see my shirt? <laughs> Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. You can get these shirts on my website as well. Is, is there anything? Good morning, Denise Glove. It's good to be back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Is there anything for my personality? Is there anything in Holy Spirit, in the ministry of Holy Spirit, that is for my personality? Is there anything in this wonderful gifting of Holy Spirit that will work on me, my personality issues, my flaws, my my temperament? Is there anything that can work on my personality in Holy Spirit? And so he asked me this question. Good morning, I am Nia Sabaz. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you, Karen Cruz. Um, he asked me this question. Could the fruit of the Spirit be my remedy? for personality issues and improvements? That was a powerful, powerful question. Could the fruit of the spirit be God's remedy for our personality issues and improvements? Wow. Good morning, Renee McCoy. Good morning, coming up the timeline. Rhonda, Rhonda Dooley. Can Holy Spirit work on my personality? I want you to put that in the chat. Because it's almost as if our personality is off limits to Holy Spirit. So, okay, Holy Spirit is going to anoint me. Holy Spirit is going to use me. Holy Spirit is going to, um, to be... Um, my my spirit of truth, Holy Spirit is my advantage. But what if, if I'm honest, what if I need Holy Spirit more in my personality than I need Holy Spirit in my ministry or in to be anointed to? So. Let me tell you what 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 kind of started this in in my conversation with God. Um, I, I watch us as believers, um, just always not at our best, not always not handling situations at our best with our best foot forward. Um, it's almost like sometimes we get it right, and sometimes we don't. And I'm watching us in, in the church world, in the marketplace, um, as I engage parents and students and coworkers, et cetera. And I'm wondering, do we believe that the power that raised Jesus from the dead also has been given to us to tame our temper, um, to 
to um, to ignite um, our temperaments in a way that they're more favorable? Um, do we believe, have we even considered it? Has there even been a conversation that Holy Spirit's, you know, I'm not always maybe the nicest. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm pessimistic, you know, this uh, journey um, uh, with uh, the last few months um, has really, really shown me that there are some people who are bona fide pessimistic. You know, I'm just like, wow, you know, to see the dark, never see the light. And that's a personality issue. And that comes from environment, that comes from uh, experiences, that comes from trauma. You know, I'm, I don't want to get into demons, but, you know, so many people have experienced trauma. Tracy, good morning, darling. Uh, Candace Chapman, good morning. John. So, so many of you, you know, coming up, um, Dee Nicholson and others, good morning. God bless you coming up, faithful through it all. I love that. Can Holy Spirit work on my personality? Can Holy Spirit deal with my dark side? Is there, you know, and, and I, I think, first of all, we have to own it. We have to own that trauma. We have trauma-influenced um, responses, trauma-influenced reactions. You know, um, I'm on the opposite side, praise God. I had a beautiful childhood. I had a beautiful home growing up. We were not abused. You know, we got whoopings, but we weren't abused. We weren't wealthy, but we thought we were. I had beautiful mommy, beautiful daddy beautiful sisters and brothers, you know, I didn't have a negative, um, I didn't grow up in that. So I didn't experience trauma until I got old enough to sin. And when I got old enough to sin, of course, then it brings trauma. But, you know, I didn't have that. And so my mom was very, um, very kind and very, very sweet, very loving. Now, she, she didn't hold you up, uh, but she was and my dad was very gregarious and outgoing, everybody, you know, and so I didn't come up in uh, a space where I saw things through a dark lens. Uh, my lenses are always light, bright, uh, possible. I can always see the, the, the good, a good outcome. I don't, I don't see negative. LaShawn, Renee Mika, welcome to the cathedral. I, I don't see, um, I don't see uh, that side. So when I um, started working in the marketplace as a nurse, I'm, I, I am a registered nurse. When I was registered, uh, I do have a degree in nursing. Um, so um, I graduated from nursing schools 1974 and when I started off as a medical assistant and then I went into I became an LPN and then I went to a two-year program and got my degree in nursing and I worked as a registered nurse and um I just I just wondered you know wow you know so many you know people that just I automatically see light I automatically see it. And I, I realize that that's an environment I was raised in. But when you run into people that are that are dark, they, they see dark, that is most times because there is some space where they either have been injured emotionally, their soul has been broken, uh, there's been some abuse or some trauma and so when we come to Christ, we bring that with us, evangelism, um, to keep a good morning coming up at time. I thank you for joining us on Instagram. Thank you, Jonathan, uh, Geraldine Sanders. And so I don't know if we have ever said, can Holy Spirit work on my personality? Or do we think we are stuck with it? Do we think that we are stuck 
with a certain personality. Now, temperaments are different. Uh, temperaments have to do with uh, the wiring uh, prior to a uh, trauma, just the way we are wired. Uh, we know that there are four basic temperaments. Uh, we know that there are um, temp and we'll talk about these temperaments. I saw someone uh, said they had read, I think it was Dr. Boykin said, I've read Spirit Control Temperaments. Uh, that's a Tim LaHaye book. That's a classic. Uh, and so we'll talk about those temperaments, but I really want to talk about personalities. Am I stuck with my personality? So Holy, it, will Holy Spirit work on everything else except my personality? And, and here, here's the other question. Do I think my personality is a problem? Do, do I think my personality is a problem? And many times because it's the way you've been raised, it's the environment you came out of, it's the way you've survived, it's the way that you have, 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 have had to live your life. Pastor Jemison, it's the way that you you um, you think that you can make it like that, and so you you think that maybe possibly this can never change. I can't. This is just. I hear people say this. You know, I've been pastor, I've been ministry fifty years, so you hear people say, uh, "I'm this just the way I am." This is just the way I am. <laughs> Do I think I'm ever the problem? Do I think, you know, and I have to examine me. I don't want to examine folks. I have to examine me. You know, um, is my temperament or my personality, can it be altered by Holy Spirit in my life? And could the fruit of Holy Spirit be the guide to my personality adjustment. And, and I, I want to deal with this, my personality, not my, my anointing, not my gift, but my personality. And have we ever thought, I see my daughter's coming up the timeline. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Alan. Good morning. Good morning. I, I don't know if if I've ever taught. I've taught on temperaments, but I don't think I've ever taught. And it, it was only because Holy Spirit asked me the question. Could fruit of the spirit be the guide for personality healing? Wow. Have we ever thought that our personalities need healing? <laughs> and and the answer is Holy Spirit will reconstruct your personality to his likeness. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. My person I'm not stuck with my personality. Somebody write that in the chat. I'm not stuck. I'm not stuck. I'm not stuck with my personality. If there are weaknesses or flaws, if I'm overtly controlling, if I am uh, uh, um, covertly seething with anger, walking around with, with uh, unforgiveness, you know, I'm not stuck with my personality. Pastor Sheila Johnson, I'm not stuck. Just like I'm not stuck with illness or I'm not stuck with a disease. I'm not stuck with my personality. And you really have to have to have to think about this. When 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 and I'm light, bright. I it, I see light in everything. You know, I I see possibilities all the time. And this was before spirit baptism. This was before spirit baptism. Woo. <laughs> this was before I received baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
I was bright. I'm a bright child. I was, I, I see possibilities. I, I can do it. It can be done. I don't care what the obstacle is. I don't care what the challenge is. It can be done. And I've been like that all my life. But I realized that that's not everybody's personality. That there are people that always need to see the dark first because that's a safe place. That's that's a place where they feel that they will not be disappointed. So the dark side, the negative side, these areas are easier for some and this is what they live their whole life and i'm always thinking woo, <laughs> woo. <laughs> deborah phillips says attended a conference this week which highlighted domestic violence and mental wellness and how the church can be used to impact these communities wow my son has a mental opportunity. Okay. I don't know, but I, I, I'm going to see. And he says, I am who I am. My answer to him is too long for this platform, but short answer. If our personalities don't conform to Holy Spirit, then we must change. We must be changed. There are benefits and consequences to both choices. Wow. That's good. That's good. That's good. Some people say, well, I'm an introvert. I'm an extrovert. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't tell you that I agree. I know anthropology. I know sociology. I know psychology, but I know theology. And we were all created in the image and likeness of God. I believe this. I believe this with all my heart that Holy Spirit will deconstruct our current personality and reconstruct a new personality in the likeness of Christ. Ooh, shakaba. <laughs> and I believe this is where, Dr. James, this is where the enemy is working in relationships. This is where the enemy is working in the church. This is where the enemy is working in uh, uh, the marketplace because our personalities, we think we are stuck with our present personality. Could the fruit of spirit, <laughs> uh, Sister Arnita, absolutely. I hear people say, don't get your hopes up, just negativity. Oh my God. I, I've watched it even in um, uh, this process of getting to the gala. I'm like, wow. You know, so many people, man, they kill it before before it lives. Just with our words. We kill it with our fear. We kill it with our own um, um, not, 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 uh, the, uh, not the ability to see light and possibility. I get it. But can Holy Spirit help us the fruit of of holy spirit galatians chapter number five i want us to look at this i want us to really really look at this <laughs> you know i know people that cry i know people that get very upset and and just i mean just the slightest thing can trigger such a emotion. It's like, oh my God, if you don't stop, you're going to have a heart attack. That's, that's an ingrained personality that somehow you believe something is triggering you to go to that level of rage or anger or fear or anxiety. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Bakashkata. Yes, Deborah. Yes. Yes, Deborah. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and I think about, you know, uh, I think about how we 
were raised in our home, we weren't allowed um, to say words. We weren't allowed certain conversations. We, we couldn't have certain conversations, uh, not in our home. We could not, we could not, um, we couldn't say certain words, you know, and we, we, we could not even act certain ways. Bon Joe, and God bless you, Patrick. Uh, we could not, you know, and I think that parenting has a lot to do with what people become, what you allow children, what you allow, you know, I think that parenting has a lot to do, you know, and when you are pastoring, and leading people in the marketplace and ministry, you see all of these personalities and temperaments, you know, and you say, oh, wow, wonder what happened. I wish I could go back and heal that. I wish I could go back and fix that. That's not my response at all. You know, and certain things that you were raised to think was truth, certain things that you were raised to think was okay, was acceptable. When we come to Christ and then we come to spirit baptism, you know, is there anything in spirit baptism for my personality? Woo, 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 wow, wow. So many people live with emotional extremes. Yes, woo, I mean, from zero to a hundred and the older you get, the more you practice that behavior, you know, and, and words, 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 words that you say out of your mouth that nobody ever stopped you, nobody ever corrected you, you know, and now that you are an adult, you, 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 uh, <laughs> when you get corrected, you, your, your immediate response is one of defense. You want to defend that behavior rather than to adjust it rather than to accept that was just you're right i need to change that but that's the working of holy spirit in our lives i'm not perfect i, I realize that but i know that that one of the benefits the advantage in my life has been holy spirit absolutely and so when 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 words, oh yeah, we Dr. Anika, good morning, beloved. We we get to the place where we are, we are more, we are more uh in tune with being defensive to keep ourselves, to keep ourselves the way we are. Then we are because we believe that the way we respond or the way we're reacting is a right way. And, and 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 you're living in these emotional extremes. Ooh, you know, and, and so there has to, I don't believe that Holy Spirit is going to leave that facet of our lives untouched. <laughs> Ooh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Uh, Minister Hillary, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that God would give us this powerful, powerful, powerful gift. And we not allow the gift to tame our temperaments and to reset our personalities. It's just an area we haven't talked about. It's an area we haven't talked about. When we say that that is who I am, good morning, Vita. When we say, well, this is just who I am, and you saw that behavior, you experienced that dysfunctional behavior growing up. You experienced that, that dysfunctional response. Those dysfunctional emotions became adapted as normal. And we think that's just the way we are. No, no. It's what we have been fed. It's, it's what we've been fed. That's why parenting is so important. What you allow a child to get away with. What you allow a child to see. 
what you allow a child to be exposed to. You're shaping that child's energy. You're shaping that child's personality. A child can run through the house and scream and hit things and knock things over and choke the dog and kill the fish. You are allowing that behavior to shape that child's personality. <laughs> Woo, is anybody hearing me? I'm telling you, this, this is going to be good. This is, this is going to be very good. This is going to be very good. What you correct as a parent, what you allow as a parent, what you expose your child to, what these, these are things that have shaped us. And we don't think Holy Spirit should tamper with us. And sometimes Holy Spirit tampers with us through the word or he tampers with us through leadership. We don't like that. I, I'm learning that adults don't really like leadership. They're quick to say, oh, you trying to control me or this is a dictatorship. No, it's a check on you by the word by the leadership that watches over your soul. You don't need to get defensive. You don't need to be angry or offended. You need to understand this is why God gives us leaders because we must submit to some authority, which is God's plan to protect our lives. We come to the church as an adult and we don't want nobody to say nothing to us about ourselves. This is why I keep a pastor. This is why I keep bishops. Because I need people to check me. You need people to check you without being offended. Because your personality does not correspond to your anointing. Ooh, is anybody hearing me? Is anybody hearing me? Let's go to Galatians 5. And let's start with verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled. And keeping this one command. Wow. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I, I can challenge that because sometimes, <laughs> so, so, sometimes we can't love our neighbors because we don't love ourselves. That there's so many people that are walking around with self hate. Self-condemnation is difficult to see the love of God played out because people don't love themselves. People are bitter. People are walking around with unresolved anger, unresolved, unconfronted trauma. In the body of Christ, you hate yourself and you see everyone through the lenses of your self-hatred you don't like your life you don't like yourself you don't like your child you didn't like you don't like anything and so anytime that there is a squeeze anytime that there is an adjustment instead of making the adjustment and accepting it as the role of holy spirit in your life you would rather call it some by some name because that makes you feel better about being dysfunctional. Okay. <laughs> it makes you feel better. So it's easy for you to say, oh, uh, that, uh, I, if that if, no, you're on the job. Uh, ain't nobody going to control me. Ain't nobody going to control No, you got checked. But you would rather accept that as a negative so you don't have to make the adjustments. This is why we need Holy Spirit to be more than just a ministry gift, a ministry. No, we need Holy Spirit 
to change us and rearrange our personalities. I don't know if I've ever heard a sermon on Holy Spirit and my personality. <laughs> Watch this. For well, the entire commandment or the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Wow. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Man. Woo. And we think this is okay. And, and, and we afford the opportunity. Oh my God. Saints fighting. <laughs> Saints fighting, arguing, fussing, talking behind people's back in a negative way. This, this is not, this is not Pentecost. That's not Pentecost behavior, folks. Woo, listen, listen. So I say, verse 16, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh desires what is contrary to Holy Spirit. Wow. And the Spirit desires what is contrary to the flesh. And most times when we talk about flesh, we're thinking about sex. No, no, your temperament, your personality. You have to ask yourself, am, am I easy? When things are going uh, in a way, you know, that I may not be familiar, am I, am I easy to amend? Am I easy to comply? Or do I... Do I need to, you know, to get 900 questions answered? You know, you have to ask yourself, am, am I stubborn? Do I feel that my way is always the better way? You know, at what, what are you sensing, you know, when you get corrected or when there's an adjustment asked of, of us? How do we respond? You know, do we get pouty? Do we get sour? Or do we say, whoo? That was good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing that to me. How do we respond to correction? How do we respond to leadership making adjustments in our lives, either one on one or in the word or, you know, just a check? How do we respond? You know, are we emotionally healthy? Are we in our personalities healthy? Woo. So the, 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 the spirit and the flesh, the flesh is so much more than sex. It's the soul of us, the soul of us, the body of us, the soul of you. The soul of you is your will, your emotions, your, 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 your intelligence, your intellect. That's the soul of you. And, and so we want, we want our spirit man to be submitted to God, but we don't want our soul. The Bible says to receive the engrafted word of God. James says that is able to save our soul, to deliver us. Do I, do I get sour? Do I, do I cry when I get, you know, corrected? Do I, do I automatically think that they are wrong and I'm right. Do I even consider the check or do I get immediately defensive? And that is because that's covering. That is the, that is the wall that is covering usually an injury. It doesn't make you a bad person. <laughs> times is 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 in need of repair Ooh. 
and then we think evil and then we communicate it to somebody else now we poison them pastor gilbert used to teach this it says one thing uh to be evil but it's another thing to be wicked and i said mom what does that mean he said evil is okay you're off okay the enemy is using you and and for whatever the reason it's just evil but wicked is when i involve others in my evil when i divulge when i talk when i share what i'm feeling with somebody else now i have in i brought them in to my evil now i'm wicked and 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 this this is this is why there is so much confusion in the body of Christ. Ooh. <laughs> These two are in conflict with each other, talking about the spirit and the flesh. So that you are not to do whatever you want, not to do whatever you want, not to do whatever you want. Our soul is the area or the seat of our personality. And there is much that has happened in our lives that's shaping that soul. That's why when you receive the engrafted word of God, the word of God can change your soul's uh, uh, balance or imbalance. The word of God. Woo, <laughs> Woo, good morning, good morning. Come on in here. Come on in to this in class. And, 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 and so I'm a recluse. That's a personality challenge. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm this. I'm, you know, I'm that. And we name it. We, we name ourselves. We take on these categories and we take on these labels. And some of us are 40, 50, 60, 70 years old and still cut, still, still up, you know, up. But that, that's because all of that defense, all of that cover up is hiding a soul that needs to be healed. So I don't, I don't get offended. I, I can't get offended because I realize that that's, if I'm going to get offended, I can't help you. Watch this. Watch this. They are in conflict with each other that you do not know. So you, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, then you are not under the law. Now, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, Ooh. selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not talking about you going to heaven. <laughs> it's talking about the inheritance of the kingdom, kingdom concepts, kingdom revelation, kingdom ideas, kingdom outcomes. You will not inherit the kingdom of God because your soul is not healthy enough. Your personality is not healthy enough for God to release kingdom principles to you. <laughs> oh my God, my God. Look, look at what it says in the message uh, that these things, uh, paranoid, loneliness, cutthroat competition, all consuming yet never satisfied wants, brutal tempers, a brutal temper, impotence to love or be loved, Divided homes, divided lives, Woo. small minded and lopsided pursuits, the habit of depersonalization. Woo, Rabbi Woo. Come on, Geraldine Woods. 
Hey. <laughs> And we and we allow we allow it even our children we allow it, and these adults they come to the house of God and they don't think they're supposed to be checked. We don't think our personality is supposed to be submitted to Holy Spirit because there's not a lot of teaching on this. And I get it. Watch this. Watch this. The flesh is an enemy. There are inbred tendencies. Inbred. How was it inbred? In your culture, in your environment. Certain dysfunctions that were allowed to prevail in your children because it was prevailing in you. And now you see it everywhere. It's, it, 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 whoa, listen, listen. <laughs> You got to hear this. It's not your shout message. This is not about can I heal the sick or can I cast out devils? This is my personality. The soul, the soul of me. Oh, my God, my God. Fits of anger, rage. Listen to this. And these inclinations are the most immediate enemy of the believer who desires to live a life under the control, influence, and empowerment of Holy Spirit. The word says the desire alone to do good is not enough to overcome our flesh. We are called to war against our flesh. Not to accept it, not to condone it, not to, not to justify it, but to war against our flesh. What are you saying, Bishop? I have to war against my inbred tendencies. Woo! <laughs> my urges my indulgences jack haper says victory in this war is found in abiding in the right relationship with jesus understanding the true strength found in our weaknesses and continually submitting to the unction and urging of holy spirit Wow, wow. <laughs> the opposite of these negative personalities, these negative responses and negative reactions is the walk in the spirit, godliness and moral purity. That Holy Spirit develops in us in our personalities. It's not, I said to someone the other day, one of my daughters, she said, well, I'm going to fast about this. I said, you don't need to fast about that. that that's not an issue of fasting. She said, well, I, I need to fast. About it. No, you need to war against this by following the unctions and urgings of Holy Spirit. And sometimes that comes through an instruction from your leader. There's so much, we, we try to do this, but sometimes I just need to follow instructions. And if I follow instructions, Holy Spirit is training me to adopt a new modality of how I live my life. Is anybody hearing me? Is anybody hearing me? We're, we're going to dig down into this. Holy Spirit gives us personal warnings. Holy Spirit says to us, that is not right. The way you are talking, you should be quiet. You shouldn't be repeating this. Holy Spirit is saying to you that the way that that was done, the way that you are thinking, I'm telling you, but we don't think our 
personalities need to submit to Holy Spirit. Ooh. Folks, you go to a million therapists and take a million drugs. But until you yield your personality to Holy Spirit, until you yield your personality. <laughs> Some would rather fight and sweat you fight. Why are you fighting so hard? Just stay the way you are. Why are you fighting so hard to stay the way you are? Why, why are you resisting the change? You've got to ask these questions of yourself. And this grieves Holy Spirit. We're going to dig into this. We're going to dig into this. Could the fruit of the Spirit be God's answer for the challenges that I have in my personality? Wow. Have I ever looked at Holy Spirit's fruit as the way in which I must allow Holy Spirit to heal my personality because I don't have to be stuck with the personality that I currently have adopted. Ooh. <laughs> Listen, we're going to dig into this. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're going to dig in it together. We come in together. We're not, we're not fighting nobody. We're not bashing nobody. Holy Spirit is talking to all of us. And this season, this lesson in this season is not about your anointing, your ministry. No, about your personalities, your inbred tendencies. We're taking a deep dive. Hey, listen, I got to go. I don't know what happened to this time. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I got to get out of here. Hey, listen, I'm so glad to be back. Don't miss this series. Don't miss this week. We'll see you by the grace of God on the next broadcast. But I'm telling you, share this. Rewatch it. Read the, the fifth chapter and uh, of, of Galatians and get yourself ready as we take this deep dive. To answer the question that God asked of me, can my Holy Spirit help you with your personality? I got to go. <laughs>